we had a knowledge brokers panel where they they did objection handling and you know got questions from the audience it's, it's way more interactive and the speakers feel tangible because after the events we interact with everybody it's not like we go behind some green person. screen or not green yeah. screen but the uh you know the back room and then never see them again and then we take our private jets and then we're right, out right. It, right it's like we interact flipping with the everybody. bird as you leave with a with a exactly. glass of champagne in your other hand right exactly after doing 30 <laughs> minutes on authenticity you know, right. we, we, we give people what they're looking for and <laughs> we just want to separate ourselves so, like yeah. our content's different our events are going to be different Welcome to the podcast dedicated to real estate, insurance, and everything in between. Join us as we take you along our own brokerage building journeys with additional wisdom from our network of business experts. Welcome to Bricks and Risk. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Bricks and Risk. I'm Tim Garrity. And I'm Sean Mooney. Today, Sean, we have an incredible guest on today. We have Eric Simon, founder of The Broke Agent and co-founder of BAM. What's up, man? Welcome. What's up, fellas? Thanks for having me. Awesome. Awesome. Today is a great day in BAM world. I'll tell you that. Oh. No problems going on no. whatsoever. Yeah, I'm sure it's nice and clean like our days too. So yeah, we're going to jump Sweet. into that. Um, so a little background on Eric. So uh, he is the founder of The Broke Agent, which he started himself. And became a co-founder of BAM, which is Broke Agent Media, and he's also the chief of content. Um, some of the background that I found on Eric was that he graduated from USC in 2012. Communications and entrepreneurship major, do I have that correct? Damn, you did your digging, yeah. yeah. Two very difficult... A very difficult major, communications. That's the one that all the the big like kinesiology, do. right? Isn't I remember that the my other tough one. My com my com friends in college were like, "Yeah, uh, today we watched the movie." I was like, "Oh, sounds good." Yeah, um, today, con communications is basically how can I just get through college? I, I mean, I had a great GPA and GPA and everything, but how do I just keep partying basically? Yeah, that's and awesome. still take classes and go to campus and be in classes with a bunch of attractive women. Right. That's why I took communications. I love it. Um, Lambda Chi Alpha fraternity. Do I have that correct oh my as well? God. Yeah, way back. Machine. Yeah, we're we're fraternity boys too. We were Phi Gamma Delta, which they call Fiji on most campuses. Nice. Yeah. Um, and then also, you were the staff of the Daily Trojan, which I read is like a hundred year old independent student newspaper, which I think is going to kind of play into some of our stuff today too, which is pretty cool. What did you pull up my 2013 resume? How did you? Even I did. Find yeah. This up? I'm like, what can I pull from that's at least ten years old, so that I am in as incorrect as possible? Eric, so, have you done? Wait, have you done anything in the last year or two? For the yeah, exactly. The <laughs> Daily Trojan. I put that on my resumes to get jobs after college. I think I maybe had one article on the Daily Trojan. <laughs> right. Oh, I love if it. If it was even published, I think they probably rejected the it. The guest article. I love yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Um, used to be an agent in Beverly Hills and you're a big sports guy. Big sports guy. Yeah. Awesome. So uh all right. So first yeah, question. That was good. Yeah. First question. So from my perspective. You are building what I would like to call a community of real estate agents, experts, speakers, and leaders. Uh, and the first two year broke agent, was that like your ultimate goal? Like fast forward to today, you know, I think you've been doing this like almost 10 years. You fast forward to yep. today, like, did you kind of envision that when you first started? Did it kind of morph into that? It, it evolved really naturally. I got my license in 2014 and I'll just give you a brief background to show how the broke agent came to be and then kind of what my thoughts were when I started it. But awesome. I got my license because I was the receptionist at a brokerage in Beverly Hills, nice. a oh. temporary receptionist. Yes. I did I it because it. I was basically just making vines and posting Snapchats. I was in between <laughs> jobs. I worked at the Laugh Factory Comedy Club, was doing social media. And basically this girl hit me up and said, hey, I see you're losing your mind. You should probably <laughs> get a job and come work at this brokerage. I, I didn't know if it was residential, commercial. I didn't know anything about real estate. So I, I became the receptionist, got hired as a marketing assistant, then became a buyer's agent. As I was a buyer's agent, that's when I was doing all the cold calling, the door knocking, the sitting, the dead open houses. I was basically an unpaid intern. You know, it was like every buyer I brought in, I would get 40%. Every listing I brought in, I would get 30%, but I was bringing in absolutely nothing. Yeah. So I was basically just driving around Los Angeles, spending money on gas and sushi. And it, it was <laughs> right. one of the most unproductive six months of my life, but it birthed the broke agent because I couldn't believe how successful all these other agents were 
on social media or in my brokerage. Like all I would see on social media when I was sitting in these dead open houses was the grind culture, the hustle culture, the motivational quotes, the just solds, the just listed. And it really bothered me because I had read that stat that everyone repeats ad nauseum that 87% of agents fail in their first five years. So I'm like, where the hell are these agents? I mention that all the time. Sorry about that. Look, everyone does. Yeah. It's the only thing I know. It's the only stat that I know besides <laughs> every baseball stat known to mankind. Pick a World Series. I'll give you the winner. Pick a World Series from 1980 to 2024. John's more the uh, sports history dude. 2008. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys want to know the answer, oh, it doesn't go. matter. How about this? Phillies. There you go. 2008. Ooh, Whoa, good. Over the Rays. I go. Phillies. 2008. Over the Rays. Pretty good. Um, so yeah, are you as good the, at are you as good at uh, receptioning as you are with the uh, baseball stats? Oh, I was horrible <laughs> at receptioning. Imagine being a 24 year old post grad frat guy, basically yeah. answering. Just like us. You'd be like, good afternoon, Hilton and Highland. I remember I always had to work on my inflection voice. Good afternoon, Hilton and Highland. Yeah. One moment, please. One yeah. moment, please. Did you and have then, a like, mirror in front clothes. of you uh, to make sure you were smiling You're as like, you said that? Do a little eyebrow I, thing I mean, real quick. I, I should have. It was, it was actually really intense. Hilton and Highland's a great brokerage. It's where the Altman brothers yes. came from. Yep. Um, you know, very high Mar end. Mauricio luxury. came from there as well, correct? Mauricio came from there, exactly. So he yep. had started the agency, I think, the year I got there. So he had just left. His name was still on the phone. I remember looking wow. at it. He was like Voldemort there. He who nice. must not yeah. be named when yeah. he left. Um, where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. So I started the broke agent with a friend of mine, actually, because um, we became partners. Once I dropped the buyer's agent role, I said, let's just form a team and become partners where we basically did the same thing that we were doing when we were buyer's agents and just created content that was the inner monologue of a struggling real estate agent, someone who had a ton of anxiety, someone who was not crushing it. And the stuff that just wasn't being said online, because if you're an agent, why would you post all of the insecurities that you're having? Why would you post all of the losses going right. on? And it really, you know, caught fire very quickly because there was nothing else like that out there. So to answer your question, sorry for being so long winded. No, I appreciate it. I didn't have the vision of, oh, this is going to become a media company. It basically started like, let's start these social channels. Let's see what the traction's like. And then my initial instinct was to go blog. So we started the brokeagent.com and I would kind of write Buzzfeed style blogs that were like five things to do while you're bored in an open house. But yeah. it was never like this grand thing, like this is going to become a media company with YouTube, but we did start a YouTube channel. So I kind of did all of this at the very beginning. In yeah. Like early on, you were kind of like progressive. Yeah. But it was all humor stuff. It wasn't any value stuff. Cause I had nothing of value to offer yet. It was basically just the grievances, you know, it was the pain points. It wasn't the social media chops that I have now because I had no idea what I was doing on social media. I was just posting shit. But yeah. it speaks to a lot of the agents. I mean, there's probably a lot more agents out there that are struggling, you know, especially right now. Um, than yeah. the agents that are like, I just did $20 million this year or you know, <laughs> whatever it may be is well, blogging is very near and dear to my heart. Tim's I a mean, blogger. That's, that's kind of how I OG. started too. I mean, I didn't yeah. turn into this massive, you know, media company, but it's really how I built my career as a solo agent here in Philly. I mean, I grew up here my whole life, you know, grew up in the burbs, lived in the city for like over 20 years between college and after college. And I started a, a personal brand called Philly Urban Living. And the reason I started that is because I broke into the business when I was 30 because I got laid off and I'm like, how the hell am I supposed to compete with like the Tom Tools of the world that have been crushing it for like 10 years? So I did it through content marketing. That's kind of how I got started as well. Yeah, blogging was kind of the the vision, right? Like in 2014, 2015, Barstool Sports was just popping off like Bleacher Report, all these sports blogs that I was reading. And I thought that was the North Star of let's build the social media channels to then have a big website. Because yeah, yeah. that was kind of the thing. It's like, you know, it I was. want to go on the chive.com. I want... Uh, what were some other There was ones? Curbed, like, you know, you had curbed, curbed for real estate, you had Eater for food, you had all mm -hmm. these like big... Collegehumor.com. Yep. Like there, there were all these kind of funny websites and I, and I thought like, all right, this is going to go down the funny real estate comedy sketch angle. That's let's awesome. do long form funny YouTube videos and let's try to wrap advertisement. I mean, I really had no monetization game or vision yeah. as I was building this until That's now. Well, that's awesome. It brings us to our next question. So we kind of look at you and again, I don't want to like say this literally, but like almost like the bar stool of real estate. And thank you. Finally. Yeah. Finally yeah. Someone, someone sees it. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And so kind of all talk, this hard work. Nobody. Yeah. I mean, it's like you, you look at Barstool and where they started and, and where they've gone into like a multi multifaceted, just beast of like content and, you know, 
brand and, you know, doing the whole thing. But so tell us about that business model. You know, I mentioned that and that hit home with you. Why does that hit home? Well, that, that's basically what Byron and I talked about when we first had these conversations is how do we make a different media company that speaks to the agent today, the agents of change? How do we create a media company that is unfiltered, that has personalities, that has humor, that has edge, that isn't behind a paywall, that's actually producing content the way people consume it today? We looked at the legacy media companies in existence when we first started having these conversations in mm. you know, 2020, 2021. We saw paywalls, we saw blogs, we didn't see any social clips and we didn't see any, you know, personalities that seemed relatable to the average agent. Um, and it's not to take anything away from those media companies. Yeah, I just mean like, how do I want to consume content? I consume content through clips and tweets and, you know, blogs. And it, it's not this, you know, open email necessarily read a long form blog and not understand who the person is that's even writing it. So was your question about the the business model behind it? Yeah, well, I think so it, like yeah, I okay. think from a timing standpoint too. When what you're talking about, what what you're like, oh, this is the way it should be. Is like with social media now, it's like a reel, a thirty second clip, which people are consuming the most, right? Mm -hmm. So if you can if you can capture that thirty second clip and get their attention, easy to build a following just on that. Yeah, and I think we saw like how multifaceted Barstool is, where they went super heavy, heavy on pods and shows on yeah. podcasts and shows. Yeah. Yep. And we looked at the real estate industry. There's a bunch of podcasts, but they seem to be all affiliated with their own unique brands. It wasn't like an all encompassing. Yeah. Hey, that's a BAM podcast. Like Barstool did such a good job at picking up talent and then bringing that into their network where it's like, Hey, we will provide distribution and thumbnails and editing and, you know, uh, access to our email list and collab posts and help you with the clips and everything. And that's really, how this naturally started is we had the over Ask podcast, Byron had the real word podcast, Byron had the Byron Lazine um, interview show that he would do. And we kind of combined these things, put them under the umbrella of BAM, and then looked for talent like how Barstool does, where they see these creators that are doing something that's completely unique or different voices in the industry. Let's bring them all under one roof. We could help them grow. They help with our brand and vice versa. So that and, was that was the the goal and it's it's working. And you're saying before is like, it was more like, Joe Smith agency would have a podcast or something and it wouldn't be kind of carved out and separate. It would just be more to promote that business where you're saying right. like a bar store, like what you're doing is no, you have the entity here, the brand, and then like bringing people in to like, to like push niche, that niche podcasts under the brand that fit different audiences and like different different personality segments of the market kind of, is that, is that kind of exactly like we brought in the massive agent podcast. That was a podcast yeah. that I would go on. You know, when I first started, not Dustin, when I first started uh, real estate. Dustin Brom. Yeah, Dustin. Yeah, it's a good so one. So he, he was one of our first sign-ons. You know, we've tried other different podcasts. We have Knowledge Brokers. Yep. We have I listened the Real to that one. We great. have The Hot Sheet Show. Uh, we have the Over Ask Podcast, which is coming back. We have the Walkthrough Podcast, which is real estate marketing, where we have different guests. It's hosted by myself and Dan O'Neill. That's like a marketing-specific one. So we're trying to cover different angles. And we've tried some that have worked, some that haven't. And it's, it's kind of fun figuring out how much does the real estate audience actually want, right? Like how much real estate content can an average agent actually consume? Because yeah. if it's too much, we want to pull back. We're not going to push 10, 15 podcasts in your yeah. face. That might just be to a say, lot. Hey, these are all bam podcasts. Like yeah. if you're an agent, you're probably listening to one a week, maybe. It's interesting. So we're big podcast guys, which kind of brought this together. And, you know, we both run businesses. So we're like, hey, what do we want to get out of this thing? We want to grow our businesses. That was number one. We want to make more connections, have more relationships. And to be honest, we just want to learn. Like through podcasting, I got to be honest, you, you really improve. Someone had said it before, like your articulation. You get a little bit better about speaking, about communicating, about learning. And I got to say, we've been having so much fun. Like in the beginning, we, we were only like 20 some episodes deep in the beginning. We're kind of like stiff and like, you know, awkward. Speak, and now, speak for yourself. Now, now Mooney's showing up here with a freaking mustache and like a Hawaiian shirt. I'm like, what the hell's going on over here, bro? <laughs> it's a good look. Yeah, I like it. I like this is mustache. actually, this is him, which is, which is amazing. And it only took 20 some episodes to come out. But um, so here's another one for you. I think this one, uh, this one I find interesting. So I'm in real estate, as you just learned, um, and I belong to the National Association of Realtors. Mm -hmm. So you have said before on a podcast that you're, you're interested in destroying NAR, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Did uh, I say that? I did hear that once. And again, if 
If that was a little was too that much. Pre March fifteenth. Uh, post- no, I think that was fairly. Re- it might have been on your podcast with Luke. Um, talk about the NAR stuff, because again, I know you guys like to play the uh, the other side of of the fence. It's like, hey, there's an opinion out there. This whole NAR lawsuit thing. Like some people are like, I'm never going to pay a commission again. It's like, yo, not true. And you got other people like the, the agents that have been around for like 30, 40 years are like, we're the best. Like, don't screw the bar. Like you're getting all these different opinions. Like you are an agent. What's your opinion of NAR and everything that's going on right now? If I would give you my opinion, I would literally just be regurgitating the opinions of other people that we've had on our shows. So yeah. I'll, I'll tell you my personal experience with this NAR, NAR lawsuit from like a media company perspective. Okay. From a media company perspective, news is extremely interesting. And like, this is a a big story that every agent wants to get information from. And it's been really cool to see who is actually like producing the content that is helpful, who is just doing it for clicks, who is doing it for fear mongering. And we're trying to find our lane as a media company is how we want to produce this content. We want to do live streams and webinars. Wait, it's not just clicks? No, of course it is. I mean, <laughs> it's the best thing that's ever happened to a media company. Very true. I, clicks, and then, I don't clicks and then every, you know, then we find her. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, you, you saw when it came out, it was just like, okay, you got to be first to news. So you yep. saw all these agents kind of green screening it and talking about it like this is the end of the world. You yeah. saw all of the news headlines about how 6% commissions are done, buyer's agent commissions are done. Then you saw agents rebutting those and saying, oh, you know, nothing's actually changing. It's just about the way you advertise in the MLS. So this is kind of a non-answer answered to your question because it's all just from how I'm publishing the content. But I think it's been really cool to see the thirst for this knowledge from agents where they really are turning to the Tom Ferries, the Byron Lazines, yep. the Tom Tools. And then you see a bunch of kind of grifting people as well who are just saying like, oh, I'm doing a NAR settlement webinar. But then you watch the webinar and they have absolutely no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> I would have no idea what I'm talking about if if I were to talk about the NAR settlement. Yeah. I know what it's like to produce content around the NAR settlement and put people in place that really know what they're talking about. Does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Like I'm, I haven't been an active agent since 2020. I've been doing the social media content, the blog content, and basically publishing, finding creators. So I'm not going to give you a great opinion on where I think the NAR settlement is going to take the industry. I could give you the opinions on how we produce content around it and who I think like the right leaders are to execute that message. But speaking from a media company, it has to be good for business. It's good. I mean, it it definitely like we saw our website views explode during this. I think there's a lot of exhaustion to uh, a lot of exhaustion around the topic as well. So it's kind of about like walking a thin line of how many, you know, a new settlement happens and all these copycat settlements. How many news headlines do we actually want to post around this? Because when I, I publish all the Instagram content, I see a lot of agent feedback about I'm sick of hearing about this. Like this right, is not right, right. helpful information. Oh, it's another settlement. Oh, you know, home service. Like it, it like enough is enough at some point. Yeah. So we're just trying to position the content where it's like, here are the scripts on ha- how to handle these objections. Let's put, you know, Tom Tool, Lisa Chinati, and Byron on the podcast, have them do a panel about what sort of, you know, conversations are they having with their clients? Cause they're actually in the field with it. Yep. Right. I'm not. I'm sitting behind a computer publishing the clips that they are talking about. Yeah. No, oh, super interesting. I did say to Tim the one time I I, I found it very interesting or funny. There was one uh, meme and it was the guy with the stick. It was look at the blob with the stick and he's like poking mm-hmm. it and there's like laying on the ground and it was gnar and I was like, "Are you awake? <laughs> are you there? Are right. you dead?" I mean, I think agents are obviously frustrated with the representation and they see. Yeah. I mean, Byron just did a great long form interview with the president, Kevin Sears. So oh, yeah. everybody to- I saw that just the other day, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I think that's going to be a really good one. It was a great conversation. Yeah. Um, you, you really hear it from the NAR perspective. It was not at all like a got you interview. Byron definitely yeah. asked some hard hitting questions about all the money they spend with, you know, Havis Marketing Group and yep. kind of the politics of NAR and the way they hired the new CEO and her role and everything. So it's a really interesting conversation, but I think it was a lot great. Of agents... I actually listened to it. Did you? Did you listen yeah. to that one? I thought it was really good. Well, in the beginning too, he's like, uh, the president was like, I'm going to answer what I can answer, but if I can't answer, I'm not going to answer. Look at you like, listening to real estate yeah, stuff you know? now. It's like, I haven't even there listened to it yet. No, it's really good. Really it was it. good because the, the perspective was from like, 
it was good because he was unafraid to ask questions. I think yeah, Byron's he, really good. Yeah, he's he very, went in very with good. the mindset of like, hey man, this is an opportunity, and he took it upon himself. Like, I'm actually representing realtors to, yep. to, to and their voice, um, and really, you know, made them answer those questions about the branding and the spending of the money, and you know, that at one point he was like, well. They did a poll on people of like asking random people, do you know what the difference is between a real estate agent and a realtor? And like nobody knew. Yeah, like, that's a good where, question. They're like, where's this fifty million dollars going? Yeah. So yeah, the effectiveness, the effectiveness of the that's who we are campaign. Yeah. Yeah. All very interesting. Nice. I mean, I, I think people think a lot of aspects of the real estate industry are a racket, which they are, right? Like the are. licensing courses to Absolutely. continuing ed to NAR itself. You know, what what are our dues actually going to? Uh, everyone just kind of feels frustrated by the way this industry represents them. And that's honestly yeah. why we created BAM. So I was probably kidding when I said, I want to destroy NAR, but yeah, yeah. you know, some kind of different representation or just different media outlet that people could tune to where it's voices they trust. It's actually active real estate ish, um, agents and practitioners. It's not just a bunch of, you know, pontificating right. journalists kind yeah. of saying things where it's like, Oh, like I, the information I get from Tom Tool and Byron is incredible because they run the number one teams in their respective areas. Right. right. Like these are people that are actually doing it. I listen to the broke agent with marketing because that's what he's doing all day. Yeah. It's not people that are just kind of regurgitating talking points from other people. That's why I didn't give like a straight answer on the NAR settlement because my opinion is just being formed from all these other talking head opinions right. in our network. And because I'm not an active agent, I don't want to like misrepresent or just say something just yeah, to say something. I hope exactly. that makes sense. You don't want to poke the bear. I mean, NAR's a pretty big bear. And here's what's interesting. It's like Mooney, we did an episode a couple ago. And he was just asking me questions because he doesn't, you know, he's bought houses through me, he sold real estate. Mm -hmm. And he's like, what's a buyer agent? Like, how does that work? Like, why is the commission, why is the commission in jeopardy? Like, why is the buyer going to get hurt? Why is the seller winning? Like, was asking these questions. And to be honest, no one would ever know the answers. The main reason I give, Eric, is... You buy and sell real estate every 5, 15, 50 years. Like, think about it. You buy, you might buy or lease a car every three to five, seven years, and you still don't remember how the hell you did it the last time you did it. You're like, is that what the terms were? Is that what it costs? Like, is that how this works? Like, you don't know. Imagine with real estate, an investment is like 10 or 50 times as expensive as your car, and you've like almost never done it. So when you mm -hmm. jump into it, unfortunately, you get a lot of people that are relatively new in this industry, and they're good at sales. And they come in. And they make, you know, they overpromise and they underdeliver. And when I first got in this business, the one thing I used to tell people, I'm like, I am underpromise and overdeliver all day long. That's how I roll. Because for me, I'm a relationship guy. It's like you and I are even talking today because we know someone of the same network. And when you build the relationships in real estate, you actually get really amazing, like undying loyalty of service from your agent because they get crushed. They're taking calls at 10 o'clock at night on a Saturday. They're spending money out of their own pocket on your closing gift. You know, something goes wrong with the mortgage company or like the use and occupancy. They just, they just drop their credit card down. They're like, I'm never even going to tell my client about it because I don't want to stress them out. They're pregnant. They're getting married. They're, they're moving across the country. Like this is what good real estate agents do. So when Knowledge Brokers is fantastic, I, I would recommend that to anyone listening to this today. If you're in real estate, listen to Knowledge Brokers because they really give it to you straight. Those guys and girl are all practicing agents. They run massive teams. As you know, they're like crushing it with a unit count. Like they have systems, processes, brands, like that's who you want to learn from. Like you go, you, you see stuff. That's who we are. I look at the ad on TV. I'm like, what the hell does that even mean? I don't even know what that I'm a realtor. I've been a realtor for 15 years. I don't even know what the hell that means. And that's what we're spending our money on. Let alone the public has no idea what they're talking about. And that's kind of like NAR is getting whacked in the face right now because they've been kicking their feet up for a very, very long time. Largest trade organization in the U.S., largest lobbying organization in the U.S., and they're just collecting checks. And now they realize that like there's people who really care about clients in this business, some of the people we just named, and they're like, yo, we're going to lose them as members if we don't step up our game and figure this out, because right now it's tired. They're going to have yeah. uh, it, BAM members. They're going to move to BAM. Yeah. 
I think so. Right, exactly. A, a BAM trade organization. Right, right. Is, you know, Jason Haber and Mauricio started uh, a, a new organization as well. So there's a lot of I people see that. that are yeah. trying to go a, a different angle with it. But like I said, I think agents are just very unhappy with the representation. And anytime you mention NAR in content, you see the visceral in the comments. Well, I think it's probably to- a disconnect too. It's like, you know, if you poll agents, they don't want, they don't want that on a commercial, you know, they, they, they don't want, it this, makes no sense. This entity doing PR for the agents. I mean, yeah. poll the agents, see what they want and, and distribute something that's going to impact them on a one-to-one basis right. rather than, Guy said it on the um, podcast. He's like, oh, yeah, I, I think we started that campaign five years ago. What? It's like give them website support. Give them social media support. Give them entrepreneurial business training. Give them, like, accounting lessons. Like, tell them how to treat people. Like, you know, like customer service. Like, unfortunately, it's just so old. And mm. I got in this business when I was 30. I was in the mortgage business for, like, eight years, like, in corporate America. And everyone is uber professional. Like, corporate America, oh, good morning. How you doing today? You know, it's like I get I a real like st- Eric at the reception desk. It's true. He's Good like, afternoon, Hilton and Highland. How's it going, <laughs> Mr. Garrity? Um, and then I got into real estate when I was 30 and I'm from this area and I'm like practicing in the city. I'm like, yo, everyone is rude as shit. Like, what the why is everyone so unprofessional? Like, no one's returning emails, no one's returning calls, like they're only looking out for their commission. You know, it's the Wild West. And when you're in the Wild West and you have this dream of becoming a real estate agent, you're like, I just want to do well. And these people are just treating you like absolute shit. Like you need someone like NAR or your local organization be like, yo, this is common. Like it's common to be treated this way. Like it's common for people to be like this. Here's what I can do to help you. And that's what I would love to see. I think a lot of agents will use this as a scapegoat though for their lack of, you know, business prowess basically. Like, you know, everyone's saying this. So again, I'm just regurgitating what people are saying. I agree with it that the cream will rise to the the top here if that's the the right term in the sense that the agents that know how to articulate their value proposition compared to the agent that got licensed in 2021 and started doing tiktok dances and posting their captions (laughs) and basically you know opening doors as i almost was as a buyer's agent like i would be nervous if i was a buyer's agent because i'd be like well what is it that you do besides schedule on showing time you don't even know how to write your own paperwork right exactly um, so I, I think it's going to weed out some agents. So I think yep. ultimately this will be a good thing and will be a good thing for BAM as well, because then it's just, it's all the agents who really want to consume the knowledge because that's what we're giving them. If you're an agent that sees this and just gets scared and, and reads a headline and thinks, oh, so buyer's agents are done. So I, what am I doing now? Yeah. They're not even consuming our content. It's the people that are doubling down and want to consume this content and get that knowledge and scripting and objection handling. Yeah. Well, looking for value, right? Like how, how mm-hmm. do we improve? How do we level up? And it's like, all right, ultimately you're going to have maybe less listeners, but more devout listeners that are going to spend more time on your website, at your events, listening to your podcast. It's the, it's the more ideal a uh, real estate agent, I think. It's cool to see in this industry how hungry people are for knowledge. Yeah, like, yeah. A, a lot of people talk shit about real estate agents and yep. it, you know the, the public perception of real estate agents is extremely, extremely low, below car salesmen, right? But all the agents in our community and the Tom Ferry community, these people are hungry for knowledge. Like they're attending these webinars, they're taking time out of their day to go to our events or consume our BAMX content or read our blogs or watch our podcasts. Like these aren't, that entertaining, right? It's real estate podcast. So you're not doing, it's not politics. It's not sports. It's not, you know, Insurance. pop culture gossip. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, it's real estate, which is an exciting right. topic, but yeah, uh. it's just, it's fun to see how, how much agents really care. Hey everyone. This is Tim, your favorite bricks and risk co host but don't tell Sean. I hope you're enjoying this episode and I'll get right back to it in a moment. Our audience grows through word of mouth. So if you would please take a moment of your time and give us a review on the platform you're on, that would be fantastic. Please also help spread the BNR word by sharing your favorite episode with a friend. We greatly appreciate your time and trust. Now, back to the show. Yeah, let's, all right, so let's dive into that. So this is a really good segue. So you started with the broke agent. I'm assuming yep. you were kind of like a team with one and then you organically grew. Then you started BAM, Broke Agent Media, which is what we've been talking about. Talk about BAMX, because I'm a member, just so you know. And 
I think it's valuable for a lot of different reasons, but I'd love to hear your take on like how BAMX came to be and like why that's valuable for like productive agents. Yeah. So we're actually not broke agent media any, anymore. We changed the name. So broke agent media, when we first started, we're like, all right, that it makes sense to use the broke agent brand because the broke agent brand was well known, but people don't want to share a URL that says broke agent media.com. <laughs> we don't want to be affiliated <laughs> with true. being and broke agents. Rich right? so, right. was taken. Rich agent. <laughs> So now it's, you know, business and media, business and marketing, big agent media. Like we're, we're kind of figuring that out, oh, but it's basically awesome. business That's and cool. marketing agents for change is, is what we're going with. So, so, Bam, it's now so BAM, BAM is really more the, it's BAM. yeah, gotcha. Yeah, it's now BAM.com and business and marketing for agents of change uh, is, is our slogan. Um, I think if you get a spokesperson, I don't know if he's still alive, but remember that wrestler Bam Bam Bigelow? Oh, dude. I don't remember. Oh, you know, he's that's the only sport. That's the only sport that I can't just Eric's fire back and than forth with you guys on. Oh yeah, he's probably we're old yeah, heads. You, yeah, you're we're old guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this guy, he was crazy. He was like the bald head. He was all fat. He oh, had yeah. tattoos. Mm -hmm. He was like King Kong Bundy. Yeah, that's Bam Bam name. Bigelow. Yeah, Look. yeah. Oh nice. Um, oh yeah. yeah. So jump in the jump in the Bam X. So like, how'd that come to be, and like, where's that going? Yeah, kind of how I mentioned at the beginning, where just real estate education in general is awful. Continuing ed teaches you nothing. Pre-licensing teaches you nothing. You get education from so many different spots where you get coaching education. You take a course for someone who sold two homes and somehow duped you in to pay $1,000 to take their real estate training course. You take a YouTube course over here. Um, you get templates from this prop platform. Like yep. you want to be an all encompassing education platform in community. And it started with just a couple courses, but basically it's a new training every single month from Instagram to YouTube, to mini chat, to objection handling with Tom Tool, to Canva marketing with Haley Ingram, to Byron's agent tactic courses, where we're consistently teaching you content and teaching you agent tactics and, and marketing um, with stuff that is actually happening now, right? Because all this stuff evolves, like Instagram from when we started BAMX has already completely shifted. So we're updating all those trainings and courses. and. Then we have biweekly masterminds with our community. So anytime they have questions about these courses or trainings, or they want to brainstorm content ideas, or we bring in guest speakers to go over their listing presentation, we have a, a live virtual interactive mastermind every two weeks. And now we just started giving them actual content because we realized that the people want stuff given to them, right? Like it's yep. one thing to do passive training and courses, that doesn't necessarily get people excited. You're going to, you're going to probably look on BAMX, which is now we have such a, a massive bank of content. You could almost look on BAMX and find what skill do I need to improve and watch a training on that. But now we're giving you three social media templates a week, two video scripts a week and one email script a week on top of these, you know, massive data PDFs of our hot sheet show notes. And then we have the Facebook community where people could ask questions um, and basically interact with other BAMX members. So it's really community courses, trainings and templates all done for you. And then also we actually show you what to do. So on these courses and trainings, I'm in my phone showing exactly how I post an Instagram story, where I put the link, what sort of language I use, yeah. how to get more engagement. I think I what actually I watched that one. Captions. It was really good. Yeah, it was like, yeah, it's like step by step, which is highly valuable. And it's extremely affordable compared to, you know, like one of these courses we could sell for $800, right? Oh, if we yeah, just totally. said it's the broke agent yep. Instagram course, yep. we could do that. But mm -hmm. we wanted to separate ourselves from all, all these other kind of course and training platforms where it's just one course. You get a course every single month. Yeah, I and think it's, it's a course on something that's relevant. And we listen to our, our feedback from our community and say, what is it that you guys want? Oh, you want a course on lead magnets? Here's how to plug a lead magnet, a 45 minute training that I just did. That could be worth, you know, $800 again. Yeah, so that's, it's great that's and it's awesome. growing nonstop. But, you know, we're working on the platform and constantly evolving and figuring out what people want. Yeah, what's great about that. So I lead a team of agents here in Philly and, um, you know, I'm constantly looking for ways to train them in different ways. I get stuff off Inman you know, I get stuff off all different blogs. I get stuff off podcasts. And I think your stuff is great. Because it's not necessarily you're like, okay, let, let me take this and just like completely regurgitate it. But you're saying like, it's almost like me going into BAMX, giving it a try and being like, this is what I did. And this is what happened from it. Because that's the kind of stuff I was talking about before with NAR. Like no one teaches you that. Like your brokerage doesn't teach you that. You're not going to get that through a local realtor association, which is really, NAR is like whatever. Like NAR, no relationship for me. PAR, barely any relationship, which is Pennsylvania Association of Realtors. 
But Tri-County Suburban Realtors is the local boots on the ground realtor association, like nine, 10,000 members. So it's, it's a monster. And they give you more, more things you can apply to your business, but they don't teach you this stuff. A lot of what they teach is like, okay, how to not get in trouble. Like know your mm -hmm. paperwork, like understand this, like time management, you know, and you know, all that stuff is great. Like working with buyers, working with sellers, it's, it's helpful. But I think one of the hardest things about staying in the business in real estate, because again, you were an agent, so I know you can relate to this, is how do I get enough sales to stay alive? Because you're only as good as your next sale. You could have the biggest sale of your life and it was an amazing transaction. You made like 50 grand, like you gave a bottle of champagne, they move in, they give you an online review. They're like, oh, Eric, we love you. You're the greatest buyer agent ever. And then it's like, okay, like what's next? Like. If you don't have a flow or a marketing plan or a strategy, which is where I think, that's why I want to mention BAM X because I'm, I am very slowly digesting the information, but as I am, I'm starting to realize that like for you guys from where you started and where you've come, it's very highly valuable to agents who are productive. Cause even someone like me who's been doing this for 15 years and leads agents, these are things I don't teach. And it's a different way for the one who's more social media minded, not everyone is, but the agent who is will, will learn from that and be like, I'm going to take that. I'm going to try and build my business a little bit better. Mm -hmm. It's an actual business building, you know, uh, teaching session, if you want video, um, which yeah. is also what's great about YouTube too. And we, and we have a lead follow-up course with Lisa Chinati. Like again, the people yeah. that are teaching these courses, Tom Story has an entire course on his listing presentation. He has a lights camera leads course, which is all about YouTube marketing and video marketing, how he comes with nice. it, up with I, his I ideas and positions yeah. his, his content. Like, there and we have all of our webinars we have our private webinars we have private trainings it's what you, you get out of it what you put into it with bmx when you actually see all the content it could almost be overwhelming and we're going to get to a point where we could customize the experience for you where you say i just want to know about youtube here's all the courses yeah. here's all the webinars you could rewatch. here's the thumbnail course that we have like here's your step-by-step -step guide on basically how to start a hyper local youtube channel Very right cool. like that that's where we want to get to to a point where you could just go and type in I need help with objection handling and cold calling. Oh, well, here are your courses right here. Here are your scripts right here. Here's all that handed to you. So we're, like, we're getting there. Like um, an Encyclopedia fantastic. Britannica. Yeah. For a real estate agent. I think yeah, that's, exactly. I think that's, that might even be before. But I, think, I, I think, I <laughs> think. You think I don't know what an encyclopedia is? <laughs> Encyclopedia Britannica. <laughs> four. Yeah. That's true. 10 years. It's yeah. not too bad. I think yeah. one of the things that, uh, differentiates you guys just in, in the way you talk about it is that you're required to put out good content yeah. that's educational because if you don't, people aren't going to follow and people aren't going to pay you and listen yeah, to gonna you. They're not going to be a member anymore. Yeah. Whereas like anybody else is like an NAR or who, whomever else fill in the blank is they take your money and, you know, it's almost assumed that they're going to pay them and, they may or may not have great information, but with you guys, it's almost like a requirement. You, you have to continue to drive the content, the content that's going to help agents and be applicable to the daily uh, business of real estate. Yeah, it's a, it's a huge pain in the ass. Exactly. Yeah. I wish we could just take uh, monthly yeah. dues from that's, someone for no that's reason. That's a nice way of it's saying that. To an annual <laughs> fee, right? Yeah. Then, to, to be clear, you know, all of our other content is free. BAMX is just for our, our members. That's yeah. the private trainings and everything. But, you know, all, all of our blog content, we have nothing behind the paywall. All of our podcasts are free. All of our emails are free. So yep. we have a, a great funnel of free content that agents could get incredible information from if they don't want to become a member of BAMX. But yeah. I, I think eventually everyone's going to see the value in it and join BAMX for one reason or the other, whether it's the templates or the trainings. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I would agree with that. Um, all right. So here's, here's another question. So we've talked about all those platforms. Now I want to talk about events. So tell us about BAM Mania. What's going on with that? We'd love to hear about it. We are in the very beginning phases, but October 18th, we're going to throw a 500 person event at BAM Mania. We have the event location. It's an incredible, it's one of the newer hotels, a hotel bit built in 2020. So there's a little hint there. <laughs> we already have five incredible speakers Dylan. booked. Um, you, it's got, it's got the sports book with the pool, so you could do your research on it, but it's, it. it's going to be an incredible event. Um, you know, this is again, the very preliminary stages of it. We've thrown one event and one in-person event. It was BAM camp 2023 in, I'm going to say September okay. of last year in Naples. Uh, we had 120 people there completely sold it out and it was really fun to 
see the community in person because this is something again that you know I've been building since 2015 that Byron and I have been building together since really the the end of 2021 beginning of 2022 and to see that people actually bought tickets flew out to an event had a blast yeah. learned a shit ton like it was it, it was like one of the best feelings in the world to actually see these you know, digital people in person that I've had so many interactions. That's yeah, really with. cool. And, is it speakers? Is it is it classes? Is it learning? Like what? When you is it everything? When you fly? Is it partying? Um, <laughs> it's definitely partying. Yeah, um, but yeah, it's, it's just it's great speakers, but it's it's actionable, digestible stuff that you could take away. It's not the panel pontification that you go to a conference and you sit there and you see four yeah. people on social media that are completely unrelatable saying right. you just got to get on video. You just got to get on video. It's like we've heard that ten thousand times. How many times have we heard that? You, know, you got to be on. You got to be on. Instagram, Instagram stories are for authenticity. It's like we want to break through that noise. We don't want to give yeah. people the conference event experience where you sit there and you know it's good information but you, you're not going to implement it the next day. That's how I felt going to conferences because I would go to these as an agent. Yeah, I would go to the TF yeah. conferences, which are great, but I would go to the MN conferences and I would see an agent talk about how they did 200 million in GCI and they're up there you know, with their custom suit. And I was like, this is so unrelatable. I'm not going to yeah. do anything that that person is doing. I think the best uh, insurance conference that I went to was actually one where they got, you had to bring your laptop, plug in, and we are going to walk where you through. Where the hell are you plugging that thing in? I don't know. But it was like, all right, open it up. All right, get your profile. This is how you're going to do it. You, I mean, it was like step by step by step by step. And wow. everybody walked out of there after two days, like blown away that it was like, mm -hmm. holy moly. Nice. You know, yep. learn but so yeah, much. And, and then you're already set up when you leave that, uh, leave the door. At the last BAM camp, we had Tom Story talk about how to create a hyper local YouTube channel and everybody walked away saying, okay, now I know the exact steps to do it. We yeah. Had I know the formula. Brokers, yep. Yeah. We had a knowledge brokers panel where they, they did objection handling and, you know, got questions from the audience. It's way more interactive and the speakers feel tangible because after the events we interact with everybody. It's not like we go behind some green Person. screen or not green yeah. screen, but the, uh, you know, the back room and then never see them again. And then we take our private jets and then we're right. Out, right. right? It's like we interact Flipping with the every... bird as you leave with a, with a exactly. glass of champagne in your other hand. Right. <laughs> exactly. After doing 30 <laughs> minutes on authenticity, you know, right. we, we, we give people what they're looking for and we just want to separate ourselves. So, like yeah. our content's different. Our events are going to be different. Again, this is the really, very early phases of it, but we're excited for BAMCAM. Well, you I deliver, wish I could get more information, but again, it's it's early. You deliver that type of value, that 150 goes to 350, goes yeah. to six. I mean, the word gets around. It's and organically, then you, just like how they grew. Yeah. And then yeah. you have an event that's a thousand. Yeah. You got to start people. somewhere. You got to test some things. You got to see what people like, what they don't like. You but if you think, don't give yeah. the value. Absolutely. You're we'll not going to come back. Yep. Right. You can't throw a bad event. That's, True. that's the one thing. If you throw a bad event, those people will never be customers of you ever again. That's true. One thing we're really focused on right now that's crushing is the virtual events. So I don't, I don't know if you guys um, tapped into the BAM Pro Bowl, which we threw a week before the Super Bowl or BAM Fest. Yeah. I, I did the one. Um, I think I went in virtually February. to the one you just. Yeah. To the one you just had. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we, we just did BAM Fest a couple of weeks ago. Yep. These are, you know, we, we got the first one we had Ryan Serham. This yep. one we had Jordan Cohen, the number one Remax agent in the world. Yes. But we basically yeah, that was five or six, five or six speakers. In between each speaker, there's something funny. It's either a funny commercial for a sponsor, it's a music video, it's some fun interaction. Yeah, it's it's, smart. it's different smart. than your average webinars, right? Yep. It's like a fun experience. We had a DJ at this last one because it was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah, like I saw that. Yeah, Coachella. it was awesome, man. He was good. So we had a was, DJ was, spinning for 30 minutes. The Pro Bowl had had a, a national anthem at the star spangled banner before so we just want to make everything different and fun and throw the events that basically i would want to go to Dude, if you start with fun me. you know uh, yeah exactly absolutely um all right so we asked you a couple of questions before we uh scheduled this so one of them we just ask any of our guests what do you love most about business and you said the wins talk about that a little bit because again we're reaching people in real estate People, he's like, is that what I said? Uh, people in insurance. And we also reach out to like, you know, more entrepreneurs. Again, agents and people in insurance, they're entrepreneurial just like you are. So what is it about the wins that that makes you a successful entrepreneur? Well, you know how I was just listening to Gary Vee talk about how much he loves losing and loves the losses. 
I don't like that stuff. Yeah. I don't love the losses. I don't like having to, uh, you know, post content that sucks or he's the contrarian in the room. Let's be honest. I'm the actual contrarian by saying I don't <laughs> like that stuff, honestly, because it's people that are. It, I love Gary Vee. He's not full of shit, but someone could just say, oh, I just love the grind and and the fact that, you know, when people give me bad feedback that I could transition off of that. I'm not like that. I want the good feedback. But w- when I say wins. For me, a win on a, like a good day at BAM is we collected emails yep. from a piece of content that we published where I put a mini chat where I said, you know, comment the word BAM and they opened an ebook and we collected four or 500 emails and it grew the company in some way. Yeah, that's because fantastic. it's one thing to, it's one thing to post on Instagram and get engagement and pick mm-hmm. up some followers, but where's the actual conversion coming from? Because yep. we, we give out so much free content It's very frustrating when you just sit here day by day, publishing content, publishing blogs, writing captions, doing cover photos, sending emails. But then like, we're not a museum. This is what Byron always says. We're not a museum of content. This is all going somewhere. So are we getting their contact information? Are we actually having some sort of meaningful transaction? So I love it when we post a piece of content that converts. Does it get YouTube subscribers? Does it get people into BAMX? Does it get good feedback? That to me is a win. When I have a day like yesterday, for example, where we posted, I think four or five times on Instagram, five blog posts. And then I look at the, the open rate, I think we were at like 42%, but our click through rate was down. Like these are just all little, little, little losses of a day where it's like, what did we actually do today? Besides just feed a bunch of content to people. Does that make sense? That totally makes sense. Yeah. And I, I, I'm with you on the email thing too. Like what a win that could be because you're actually connecting with people Anyone can look at something and like it and comment and scroll. And that's what people do all day, every day. We do it. You know, again, we're we're trying to build this podcast audience. What are we doing? We're putting content out there. We're seeing if people are sharing it, if people are liking it, if people are asking questions. But being in, uh, like, from a content marketing standpoint, a strategy, which is kind of how you started, you you have a blogging background, so that kind of plays to that. Um, Building a brand what builds a brand when people actually say here, they're vulnerable. Here's my information. I see value in this. I'd like to learn more. And that's what's so cool about how you've grown organically too, because as you have like, again, BAM X formed through necessity. And as the more agents you may meet, like the more agents that are successful, the Tom tools of the world that say, Hey, I can add something to this platform and we can, we can win together as well as the audience can win because they're looking for things like this. Cause this is what I do. If I'm boots on the ground, what are the things I would want? And you're almost trying to relate to that person. And I think doing that content strategy in order to build relationships, like build community, People are looking at this. This is a piece of my business. Like, how do I learn from Bam? How do I learn from Eric? How they have done some things to make their business successful? Because it's not that different from real estate. It really isn't. Because you're just trying to form connections. You're trying to build trust. No like and trust. You know, if people trust you, you're going to be the first call, the first email when they're like, hey, I got a million dollar house. I got to sell. I've been here for 30 years. You know, Tim, I trust you. Can you come by and tell me what it's worth? Because I want to sell it. And you're doing something similar. That's that's really cool. I love it. Well, but- I mean, everyone's kind of creating their own little real estate media company, right? Whether it's your email list, it's your YouTube channel, it's your Instagram. So you're kind of creating little mini BAMs. And that's what we want to teach people is how do you convert those Instagram followers to email subscribers? How do you convert those email subscribers into clients? What sort of information are you feeding these people? Then how do you do it in a way that isn't too salesy and is consistent enough to stay to stay top of mind? But, you know, there's so many days where, like yesterday, for example, we film a podcast, a walkthrough podcast. We get two guests, you know, we come up with the topics, we have all the links plugged in, we, we edit the episode, the thumbnail, you know, it's basically probably three and a half, four hours of work for one episode. The episode sucked, right? Um, and it wasn't necessarily, it wasn't because of the guests. It was just like the flow was off. The topic yeah. for some reason didn't hit the, the copy of uh, is TikTok getting banned, banned, bad for real estate marketing. No one cared about that topic. So we learned from that, but it sucks because you put so much effort, you know, that's yeah. four hours of the night before I'm, I'm writing the script for the intro and we're coming up with these topics and we're scheduling with the other people. Do they show up on time? Do we have our mics? Do we have our Wi-Fi? You film an episode like this. If this episode sucked, it's a waste for both of our times. Right. So hopefully this one doesn't suck. I'm it trying definitely to definitely does know. not suck, man. You're you've been great. Well, um, your quote, uh, I think spoken like a true businessman because it's like, 
number one, you have to look at the data, look at the information and make the changes, right? Your quote that you gave us was adapt or die. Like, you know, yeah. make the necessary changes and grow from that. And I think that's a lot what you're saying is, and we've experienced it too. We had a Hell show yeah. that I thought was going to be bananas. I thought everybody in the world was going to be like, check this out. And it was like, fell flatter than flat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, what, what do we do? What do we do? And I guess it's just, you're going to have those moments. And it's not like you live or die by those moments. It's take that moment, digest it, see what worked, what didn't work, and, and how to improve on it. That's like the main thing. That's one of the pillars of branding that I always talk about is audit your content. Every three months at BAM, like quarterly, basically, um, we we have an, a content audit where we look at our YouTube channel and we say, what's working? These titles work. Okay, anything with the word script in it, that crushes in emails. How can we yeah, just yeah. use the word script for, for, more. for more things, right? Yeah. How do we produce more content around that? Oh, we realized very early on the metaverse because when we started BAM, crypto and the metaverse were popping up and people were talking about digital real estate. We realized immediately no one gave a crap about that. It was our worst performing content every single time we did anything around <laughs> that. So we stopped doing that. Yeah. So you have to look at your insights on Instagram, on email, on YouTube and see when are people, you know, what's the retention like? Did people drop off at 10 seconds in this video? Why? Yeah. Okay. So how do we change this editing? And it's very time consuming. One of the ones that the, I saw, sorry to interrupt, uh, go ahead. but it was YouTube and it was one of the uh, metrics that you can watch or is they tell you how many people go from a short to your video, like mm -hmm. drop in your video. You've actually looked at that? Oh yeah. Yeah, you and are the analytics dude. So, so you can actually then go back to your short to see, oh, okay, what did I do in this short that was pulling people over? And you can pull, like, let's just say you pulled your top five shorts that were converting over and just kind of try to replicate that. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. We're doing it. Yeah. But it's about, yeah. The, the adapter die thing. I'm glad I said that quote, actually, that I got that from Moneyball. Have you guys seen Moneyball? Yeah. 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 yeah you know, Billy Bean, he's in, he's in the room with all those scouts and they're trying to replace Giambi. He's like, <laughs> no, we just got to replace the, the on base percentage of Giambi with three cheaper players. And everyone's saying like, what are we doing? This is how we used to do it the old way. We're very, like one of our core values is adapt. Like we have to evolve. If an app evolves, we're evolving with it. We're not gonna just keep posting blogs behind a paywall and put up still images because that doesn't mean anything anymore, right? Like how, how do we how do we even change our clips if our clips aren't doing well? So I, I'm not trying to say if something doesn't work to to stop doing it immediately because yeah. you still have to give things a try. Yep. Time. Right? Like we, we, you know, we've had podcasts and shows and blogs and see like, all right, I tried this 10 times. Clearly it's not hitting. Now it's time to move on. Yep. yep. Absolutely, man. Great hey, stuff. Eric, really, really appreciate your time today. We know you're a busy guy. Um, why don't you tell the audience, you know, where people can kind of learn a little bit more about you and bam and what you got going on. Yeah, send them out my college resume again. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, we'll post that up on factory, the website. Yo, you want to learn how to write an article, one article for a hundred year old newspaper in college? Like, talk to Eric. Yeah, the <laughs> Daily Trojan. You want to learn how to write literally one article and put it on your resume? Can you give us that phone uh, <laughs> one again that you did? The reception. Exactly. Good yeah, yeah. afternoon, Hilton and Highland. One uh, moment, please. That's there you go. That. Awesome that you All still right, know you can that find so us well. at, uh, at now bam. That's our Instagram nowbam.com. Check out our YouTube channel at now, bam. I mean, we have so much content. We have the knowledge brokers podcast. We have the hot sheet show. If you're interested in, in daily market updates and housing insights from Byron every Monday at nine 30 Eastern, basically just go on now, bam.com. And then you could find everything there. Awesome. Move. Awesome, man. We appreciate your time. Thanks today. so much. So Eric. That's yeah, all we have for you. this episode, folks. So thank you for tuning in again to another episode of bricks and risk. See you soon. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Bricks and Risk. Our goal is that you walk away with one or two valuable nuggets, and we greatly appreciate you sharing your time with us today. You can find all BNR episodes on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and anywhere else you get your podcast content. Until next time, keep learning and keep growing.